See, almost every single large language model that we use today has got tokens in it. So there is a huge sentence that is split into tokens and that token is what these large language models are trained on and that is what it predicts. But have you ever thought that you could have a world where there are no tokens? Why tokens first place? That is a question that we would probably answer in this video. But if you do not have tokens, how better your large language model could be, how better its understanding could be. Because a lot of times what you're trying to do with respect to token is you're trying to crunch or you're trying to cut the sentence into something smaller so that the model can understand. But it is not the smallest unit and it is also not the largest unit. So what we are going to do in this video is understand a new paper called Mamba Byte. Now, I know you are, you might be thinking at this point that I'm obsessed with Mamba. Maybe I'm obsessed with Mamba, even though I don't like completely like a point to point understand how Mamba works. I'm still excited about Mamba. So I'm planning to make more Mamba videos. I've already got a new model called Mamba Coder that I wanted to cover. But now Mamba Byte, what is Mamba Byte? Mamba Byte is a token free selective space model. Now that's a lot of things. Uh, let's break it down. First of all, like I said, the most of the current large language models are transformer based models, we know. And these transformer based models are ultimately trying to predict the next token. So it's next token prediction engine and that is where the token comes in. So now what this paper is trying to say is this paper is saying, okay, can we have a model that does not have token, token free SSM, SSM selective state space model is basically Mamba. And that is why the name Mamba Byte. And just, just before you ask me, like if every selective space model is Mamba, no, Mamba is a specific model within SSM space. What this paper is trying to do is token free language models can directly learn from raw bytes, removing the bias of sub word tokenization. Now it is very important for us to address why are we talking about tokenization as a thing? See, whenever you have these large language models, it has to learn from something. The things that you can do, you take a sentence, I love Abdul, you can say I space love L O V E space A B D U L maybe dot. You can have characters, you can have these models predict characters. But then the problem is now transformers as much as you add a new thing next to it, it has to scale up, which is very hard with transformers. So maybe character is not a good idea. Now, can you have the entire sentence? Maybe the model will not learn what you wanted to learn. That is where the sub word tokenization has come into picture. So either use word or use sub word or characters. And out of these, the sub word tokenization has been the most popular choice because it is a natural compromise between the training efficiency and also the ability to handle out of word vocabulary because you know humans when we speak, we almost speak within words. So this has been like one of the most popular technique for the large language models to use. And the problem is there are a lot of problems. One is the lack of robustness to typos because sometimes a single word might get split into two and spelling capitalization variation or morphological, morphology, morphological changes. The big problem here is that most of these analysis or the models that we use are only for English language. If you take any other language like my language or any Indian language that does not have a Romanized alphabet, it is a huge problem because these tokens now cost a lot of money. And because most of the models these days are token based models, there is a huge disparity between the amount of money that you have to pay for GPT-4 if you use English language and the amount of money that you have to pay, let's say if you use Tamil language, like the, there is a huge disparity even in the LLM world. And one of the things that I hope this kind of new approach, a token free approach might solve is completely not having tokens at all means every language is going to be the same depending upon the bytes. So operating on bytes, how are the results in um, significantly longer sequence standard auto regressive transformer scale poorly in such settings. And that is why Mamba byte is interesting because it is trained auto regressively on byte sequences, not tokens. And their experiment indicates the computational efficiency of Mamba byte when you compare it with like other existing models. And also it uh, linearly scales in length and Mamba byte benefits from the faster inference compared to transformers. Let's look at a couple of models. They've got Mamba byte, uh, sorry, this is megabyte. They've got Mamba byte 
and they've got the transformer model so we let's primarily pay attention to these two models and also if you want megabyte now if you see here the bits per the bits per byte is uh, is a metric that is used to understand how many bits are required to predict the next byte so the lower is better so this is like a measure of understanding how much uh, these compression algorithms are let's say large language models are required to predict the next one so if you see here this is the red this line a purple or red is mamba byte and mamba byte is the lowest as you increase the number of training step which is actually a good thing which means the model is doing good and also if you see the the flops the computational efficiency you can see that mamba byte requires a lot more less computation than the transformer equivalent for in fact like the same amount of let's say bits per byte so what it says is that if you see mamba byte requires one lot less computation and mamba byte also is actually fast because it requires less bits per byte now what is the experimental setup that they've got they have got a data set called pg19 if you want to read about the data set they've got an appendix where you can go read about the data set specification so pg19 has got totally 11.74 gigs uh, total bytes uh, total number of documents bytes per document so this is this is a data set with the english books project gutenberg and a bunch of other things that are available for text modeling this is the data set that they have picked up and from this data set what they decided to do is they decided to train a mamba byte so they're typically using the same mamba architecture that was like that that are proposed like we've been discussing about the latest mamba and they wanted to see how this model is doing so the kind of context here we have is 8192 and uh, they said at least in this paper they said due to monetary reasons they could not train a larger mamba byte so if you see here every other model is like 80 billion 80 billion 80 billion only for mamba they went ahead with 30 billion because they said like they don't have like monetary they didn't have like due to monetary restrictions they could only build a 30 billion byte trained mamba model now the catch here is though even with 30 billion bytes the model in fact has done better than their transformer equivalent on multiple data sets pg19 stories books archive code in all these you could see mamba byte doing better than their transformer model if you take bp bpb it's, it's almost like a tongue twister and if you see this model comparing with other transformer based models in fact sub word based uh, the tokenizer based models you can see mamba byte with 150 billion effective byte strain and uh, if you see here this is ppl the perplexity and you can see mamba byte scores 39.5 which is way lesser than transformer excel which has scored 45.5 on validation data set or with 400 billion bytes so overall if you see this this is a very huge news uh, not just that it is a huge news because like you know i'm obsessed with mamba but also this gives a new way for us to look at large language models beyond the tokenization tokenization restriction that we have got uh, it it means like i said like one it can have better understanding long context understanding it can think beyond the sub word tokenization that we have got think beyond maybe think is a bad word it can understand or it can comprehend it can compress knowledge beyond the sub word tokenization so maybe it'll be better for it to make certain connections but the main thing like I am also excited about is how it can bring standardization uniformity between languages that are like let's say non-English versus English language. There is one more thing that you can also see is it's not just um, the what we have seen is the accuracy is good like the decent like the perplexity is good. The model is doing good with respect to the bits per byte but also if you see the inference speed a mamba byte 972 million parameter model has got uh, 29 seconds generation time on a100 i think it is a180 gb uh, gpu you can see the model has taken only 29 seconds and with the sliding window they can increase the number of bytes by 2 and still uh, the bits per byte is like 0 0.863 
while the generation time has of course uh, doubled. I think this is super exciting when you compare it with generation speed. So the inference speed is good. Um, the model is doing better. It's not like breaking up and it requires less computation to train. So you're going to get training efficiency. You're getting inference efficiency and somehow along the line, we might also get slightly a better model in itself. I think overall, this is quite exciting. I'll link the paper in the YouTube description for you to check it out. So if you see this paper in summary, we introduce Mama Byte, a token free SSM for modeling long byte sequences, not token sequences. Mamba Byte outperforms other byte level models over several data sets that we have seen here, shows competitive result with the sub word transformers, thus serving as a promising token alternative. It shows competitive result. It's not like always better than everything else. You can see that the models that they have used are also not like, you know, like cutting edge uh, transformer models. It's it's a uh, transformer Excel is like quite old and SSMs also enable significantly faster text generation due to their recurrent nature, making byte models more practical. Our findings establish the possibility of token modeling, token free language modeling in the future large models. I really appreciate this paper and I hope this paper turns into a model and I want to check out this model live to see how this model performs. Until then, see you in the next video. Happy prompting.